Hey folks! Recently, I played an historic FPS I always postponed for almost two decades after I just tried a bit once many, many years ago. Red Faction, developed by Volition. Interestingly, I didn't know until now that the PC version is actually a porting of the original PS2 release and it seems that it pretty sucked from bugs and instabilities. So, to make it more playable on my modern system, I had to install Dash Faction, an open source game patch that fixes a lot of stuff and adds many enhancements. So, playing Red Faction was quite an experience for the most part, for its then innovative technology and ambition, but, for reasons I'll cover later, it left me with uh, mixed feelings. The story is set in a not so distant future just around the 2075. The Earth is being depleted of its natural resources and mankind started to mine minerals from Mars, which excavation is conducted by the mining corporation Ultor. Ultor is actually a deceiving company that tricks people in believing in new opportunities and a better life under them on the Red Planet. And our protagonist, Parker, is one of the men who fell for this trickery, and lives a hellish life of slavery work, oppression by prepotent guards, and a mortal plague is decimating workers under the indifference of the owners. Because of this, the discontent arose between the miners, and a rebel movement in the shadows is ready to strike against Ultor Company, under the guidance of the mysterious Eos. So, the moment a work companion of Parker is brutally killed by the guards in front of his eyes, the riot finally begins, and it's time to decide. Kill or be killed. Red Faction plays pretty standardly for its time and resembles a bit Half-Life. The initial struggle in the tunnels doesn't say much, and we'll put our hands on the remote charges and experiment the game's signature and innovative technology, the geometry modification, aka the Geomod. Practically, the game permits the player to modify the scenery by destroying walls, so to create holes and tunnels through the rocks. Until then, there were the famous scripted cracks in the walls from the build engine games, like Duke Nukem 3D and Blood. Those were original and useful to vary the level design and create secrets and shortcuts, but Red Faction went far beyond, though the technical limitations didn't let the devs to make everything destructible. The most famous demonstration of this technology is shortly after the beginning, where we can make this huge enemy APC to fall into the void by destroying the bridge underneath. It was really mind-blowing. And aside the Geo mod, Red Faction featured the vehicles sections on ground and underwater, even the aircrafts, and also the ability to climb fences, which is underestimated. Going back to the plot, Parker becomes soon a key element of the miners' revolt against Ultor, under the order Sophios, and is guided throughout the game by Hendrix, an Ultor technician that decided to side with the miners. During the first hour of the game, I played with the normal difficulty. The enemies weren't big threats, and their aim was a joke, so I went to the menu and changed the difficulty to hard. I thought, well, there's even impossible mode, so hard must be doable, right? Hmm, worst choice ever. Red Faction, to put it simply, aged quite badly. The game becomes freaking unbalanced, with enemies that easily one-shot Parker in the advanced stages, and this would have been bearable if only the gunplay wasn't so atrocious. And it's not just a matter of high difficulty, I really consider it bad game design. Look, this is me trying to get a fucker that is strafing like crazy and becomes impossible to hit. I always consume the entire magazines on a single enemy that moves fast and dodges everything like uh, the Hedgen's myth. For almost all the duration of the game, I couldn't hit shit properly, because the accuracy of every weapon is ridiculous, except maybe the sniper rifle and the precise rifle, but then it's a question of being able to hit fast-moving hassles. 
Now, aside the right to shotgun that classically is a decent melee weapon with an alternate fire that makes it auto with a larger spread for no reasons, the rest of the arsenal counts on a SMG that fires two selectable types of ammo, but it's imprecise as fuck and an assault rifle which adds a primary fire mode consisting of three round bursts that are kinda precise, but the alternate fire is a nightmare. Instead the heavy machine gun is kinda decent and powerful, and the secondary fire is more precise, but nothing special. My best choice against the first tier of enemies has been the flamethrower. It ignites unarmored guards instantly and sends them into panic until they die. But if they bump into Parker, he gets hurt and they must avoid touching their corpses until the fire goes out. The best weapon of the game is this godsend railgun. It one-shots everything except uh, vehicles and bosses, and it's vital to finish the game because uh, by pressing the alt fire button, it makes us able to see through walls with X-rays, and can actually shoot through them and hit waiting enemies that will also one-shot Parker as soon as he enters their range. And fuck, there will be a ton of armored mercenaries armed with this killing toy. Seriously, this game frustrated me very much. And okay, maybe I even asked for it by setting the difficulty to hard, but at normal my accuracy would have been always terrible and the enemies move fast like after the effects of drugs. It's a real pity, because the game has a lot of potential, but I don't get why this huge problem is always overlooked by the majority of people that instead just want the Geomod technology that uh, Yes, it's very neat, but somehow I stopped to care about after the first half. You're dead. And something that caught me unprepared are the two stealth sections, in which Parker dresses like a scientist and must navigate through laboratories and offices, equipped with only his pistol for emergency use and reach some personalities to advance in the story. Direct high contact with the guards must be avoided, because he's wounded and his mag is printed on posters, and the pistol must be held in the holster, otherwise uh, shit happens with the alarms. I found these sections kinda confusing because there's a series of actions to perform so to access to advanced areas. During the first, I just lost my patience after a while and forced my way through, cause uh, fuck this shit. Instead, in the second, I figured out what to do and somehow I did it. I felt very smart. Throughout the game, I drove initially a giant driller that can make tunnels through rocks until the drills are consumed and even submersible underwater, and I didn't imagine there could be so much water on Mars. Whatever. They can launch missiles, and on different occasions I had to fight against the others, or these psionic creatures. Okay. Then I drove an whole terrain vehicle and immediately tried to run over creatures when this happened. What the shit is going on? Seriously, the driving on ground in this game is very bugged. I got stuck easily even when I was driving the UJPC. The gunships instead have a major role near the end of the game, but unfortunately, the enemies wielding the railgun can easily destroy them in a few shots, because they're not much resistant, but the controls were good. After all, we're talking about the creators of Descent. 
overly, these vehicle sections can be annoying, at least on the ground because of the bad physics, while underwater and in air, they are acceptable. The story of Red Faction as a whole is nothing spectacular, and it's not that I was expecting anything special or never seen before, but let's say that there's a certain care taken in recreating a desolate environment that arcs back to totalitarian regimes. And the narrative is almost entirely direct with radio communications, whose logs can be then be consulted, but especially for the self sections, I would have preferred a list of objectives to complete. However, there are occasional cutscenes of key moments of the story in which you can see and hear Parker interact with others, otherwise he would be a silent protagonist like Gordon Freeman, except for his death screams. You're Griffin, right? Deputy Administrator Griffin? Yes. Why do I need your help? I'm the one with the gun. I have vital information. You must take me to EOS. On the graphic side, I think Red Faction wasn't bad at all for the time of its release, although I find some things like the effects of turret explosions and the like very limited. While the music is decidedly well orchestrated, with nice pompous pieces during fights and others that create the right tension. The voice acting on the other end is nothing memorable. Parker and Eos are good, the villains are a bit caricatured, but sometimes I found Hendrix's recitation a bit too cold, like in the scene that should be quite uh, dramatic. There they go. If only you'd been faster. Maybe being slow isn't such a bad thing. Come on, many people just died. The total duration is about 5 or 6 hours, perhaps the stealth sections made me waste some time, and speaking of general variety, well, there's not much to say. Because it's mainly a succession of underground tunnels and the military or medical facilities with occasional surface areas, and the level design is almost linear, though the Geomod permits to create some shortcuts from time to time. And I liked the section set on a satellite to be blown in space, with different gravity. That's really a nice change, albeit very short. In the end, I can say that I liked Red Faction within certain limits. Unfortunately, the huge imbalance in difficulty, the obscene spread of weapons, and the enemies that are too difficult to eat if not impossible at times, make the experience very tedious, even infuriating. Still, I appreciate the ideas and the original Geomod technology. After all, being a PS2 native game, the result is kinda impressive. It's a historic and ambitious project, but I do not recommend it to everyone, except those who like to recover certain games for... Uh, cultural reasons. But, listen to me, my personal advice, just play it on normal and don't be a masochist like me. As always, a warm thanks to all viewers, and see you in the next entry. Ah! Oh! Rebel scum!